and lyrics. Hi, my dears. It's Bertie Carla, and today I am at Greater Brunswick Charter School, one of my favorite places to be. Uh, this week, we have been talking about the power of everyday action and how it can redefine change. It's all part of our Better Me, Better We campaign. And so today I wanted to highlight, um, we've been looking at three different aspects. Uh, so power of everyday action in the workplace and business, power of everyday action in personal health and well-being, and the power of everyday action in community. So I am here with the assistant and director of uh, Greater Brunswick Charter School, Ms. Rosalind Friday, and uh, we work wonderfully to close together in terms of the, um, the school wellness program. Um, what we've got is a comprehensive wellness that includes uh, socio-emotional learning and really focuses on the, the learning, the skills were already here and in place. My work has to do with how we get people into a place where they can actually delve into socio-emotional learning practices, restorative justice practices, uh, really healthy practices that help one to be able to observe, communicate, reflect with oneself, and then also observe, communicate, and reflect with others, engaging in others. So with that in mind, uh, first of all, thank you, Ms. Friday, thank for you being here for today. Thank you for having welcome. me. Oh, thank you. It's an absolute blessing. And um, look for this young lady in the future because she is such a wealth of knowledge, expertise, and wisdom that um, I definitely want to in invite her and, and have a longer conversation. Today, we're just going to focus a little bit on better me, better we, the power of everyday action. For you, I've got two questions for you. Okay. Well, what does that mean for you in this context? of um, community building education of uh, our young people? And then two, how do you see that already playing out in your life? I'm gonna have that, in, or, 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 that question is, is how do I, one of the things that I, I, I think I've, I've put out into the community and then also with that understanding, um, when I'm meeting different people, thinking about that and, and, and asking myself, how are, how are they here? Are they here in a calm state? Are they here in a frustrated or angry or, or disappointed? Because then that's going to affect how I show up for them. Um, you know, I have to make sure that I'm de-escalating um, situations that can, that can get escalated, recognizing parents or people in the community or students are brought to me who have been escalated and recognizing, okay, I need to be with them in this moment. Um, how am I showing up? Making sure that I'm a leader in that way so that um, so that we can get to a place of healing. Um, because when harm is caused, you know, restorative practice wise, we have to reconcile it and get to a point of healing. Mm -hmm. um, and so I try to reflect on that in, a, in, in the myriad of ways that I'm I'm present. So and then for, for self, that means, you know, do I take care of myself? Because I if I don't show up here whole, then that then there's going to be a ripple effect um, for how things are, how things take place, <laughs> and, you know, and, and knowing, you know, when do I need to um, cut away and, and fold in to restore myself and what what restorative things can I do for, for myself um, so that I'm able to show up um, whole. And so, you know, that means recognizing that for myself that there needs to be care. I need to get rest, drink water. Mind my business. No. <laughs> uh, no, but um, rest has been, has been key key to that because, and I even tell the students, you know, eating, eating healthy, making good choices as far as, you know, our, our health, because having enough rest means that you're able to be here with, with the 400 people that show up every day. Um, 
And when we don't take care of ourselves, then we then then we're not our best selves. And when we're not at our best, we don't think we don't think like our best. We don't act in our in our best way. Um, and so having those those real conversations um, with with good stuff in there, you know, talking about that, um, you know, the way back from because they're also sure that the whole community has a certain level of awareness. You're, you're always picking up more as you as you go and so i always look for trainings or experiences where people can get the practice um of it uh because it doesn't it doesn't just oh i learned it and it's learned no yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. living it's a living it's like i'm healed uh uh-huh, no it's a it's a living um it's living learning it's learning that lives yes. um and morphs and I develops and changes it's living learning yeah yes. it's live learning yes, it's, and alive. <laughs> it's alive it's alive um so, yeah, right. so making sure there's a certain uh, understanding, there's the education there, there's the language mm-hmm. that people are learning to use. Yes. And habits and behaviors. Right. So um, and connection, you have to be there's connection because sometimes you've, you know, mm-hmm. you've Talk learned, you've learned it, but you don't know how to apply it. Yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I know all that, you know, you have all the language and the vocabulary, but are you living it? Mm-hmm. Are you, are you practicing it? Right. Um, Cause sometimes there's a disconnect where I did that training. Yes, you did. But are you of um, the, the, the behaviors and the mindset behind the training? Do you understand why we, um, we, in, we inform our practice this way? Um, and so I've definitely experienced that my own self where, uh, you know, I took in information, but it wasn't until I found a way to see that it was there was some there was something applicable to me mm-hmm. in the course of my day. Oh, OK. You know what? That's that's showing up for me now. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it's not even in the in the professional day. Sometimes it's it's in the personal, especially when you're looking at, at these concepts like restorative justice practices and, and socio-emotional learning. Those take a self-awareness, a mm-hmm. level that we don't necessarily just like pop into the world with, you know, so we're talking about educating ourselves. You know, we understand our basic subject areas. I tell this to the kids a lot. You're doing your, your math, your science, your, your reading and writing and whatnot, but how are you doing it? Mm-hmm. That actually requires that's like its own subject, you know, this personal awareness and personal development. Yes. So it's not just what I'm doing, but how am I doing what I'm doing? Because guess what? That actually yields how I feel about myself, not just the what. You know, we've seen we've seen kids who look like they're very successful academically, you know, and maybe even in the athletically as well. But they're not feeling great about themselves. Yes. Right. So that's really important piece of this here. It's not just this output part, but it's mm-hmm. where am I in, in the process of my life? This is a big thing for adults to get, certainly sure enough for me. So I think there's such value and I just appreciate seeing the level of attention that the school is making here in teaching the part of the way that they understand living, like you said, alive. Yes. Um, and I think that for a long time, no one paid attention to the mental health part of yeah. the academic, but they go along side by side. And when when one falls falls behind, then and it is the other one is dragging and vice versa. And so they've got to be in balance. And so having our students be reflective practitioners at a young age um, is it t- is really showing um, growth in their overall um, student well-being um, and, so, and when and when they have a healthy mind you know um, then the other things fall into place healthier um, so I think that's some of the one of the few conclusions that we've come to realize is that, like you said, you're, you when we when you're looking on the outside of a student, you see you think you see a happy child, but there's that inside of them, and so we want to make sure that that inside is just as happy as the outside appears. Um, and so, spending a lot of time um, here, we've been afforded an opportunity with our with this program to do that, um, and then 
what I've also begun to see is that not only is it important for the students, but it's important for our staff and our families. Um, they need this that why? same care. Why, why, why? <laughs> they need that same Talk care because, because that's who our students are with. You know, they're with in the, in the classroom and that's who they go home to. So we can't ha have <laughs> these little reflective practitioners who still go home to a fixed mindset or who are, who are being taught by fixed um, mindset. So all of all, it all is all encompassing mm -hmm. and, and everyone has to um, buy into it and be trained and educated about um, the importance of it and the reasoning behind it so that um, we're, we're growing in wealth and in mental wealth together. Yes. Yeah. And I really love that term, reflective practitioners. Mm -hmm. Yes. We might have to get them some tea. Sensory stuff over here of late. We've got like strips of sequence and all kinds of good stuff, like sensory boards on the wall. So I'm just seeing these little, these little sensory um, t shirt t shirts that yes. have like some reflective thing around it. And I'm a reflective practitioner. We could go on about this, as you can see, but hopefully um, this helped to even give some insight into the importance of and the power of teaching our young folks the power that they have in the everyday choices that they make, that how they show up, even how they show up ready to learn. Am I ready to learn? Did I sleep well? Did I eat well? I have my yoga uh, class take their personal inventory uh, at the start of class. And we just started this trimester. So the sixth graders are now just getting used to this concept. So we were talking about this yesterday. And I could see that it makes sense to them, you know. And then they get a chance to partner with each other and, and say, and talk about like, how did it go? What did you answer? What, what health choice did you make that you were proud of that you want to do again? Because again, we want to paint the picture for what that success looks like in all its ways. And then, just as Ms. Rosalind said, it's also giving the place to practice, right? You're gonna teach something, you gotta give people the space to practice it also. And so I hope this has been informative for you. I hope you also think about how, whether you have young people in your life, whether they're your own children or just people that, that you encounter, especially at this time of year here we're coming into the holiday time and family visits and whatnot think about the young people that you encounter in your life how can i engage them in a way that supports them in being reflective practitioners how can i help them to have um, more understanding and more language for processing their life and being able to communicate about that yes Thank you so much for being here. There's a lot of good stuff to discuss yes. here. This, this is like a whole series in and of itself. So enjoy the rest of your day. Satnam. Namaste. Namaste.